Welcome to Pots, Pans, and Pioneers. Today I'm going to be making a brown sugar butterscotch bunt cake. And um, this is from my grandmother's cookbook. So um, she's from Louisiana, and in Louisiana, everybody calls their grandma Mama. So this is from my Mama's uh, Pots, Pans, and Pioneers cookbook. And um, so let's get started. What you're going to need is uh, I'm going to post the recipe on my blog page at potspansandpioneers.com and uh, we're going to start with uh, one and a half cups of butter and I would highly recommend that you use a stick of salted and a stick of unsalted but if all you have is salted that's great and it needs to be softened so you can cream it up really well and this is going to be two full sticks Her recipe calls for one and a half cups, which is another half a stick of butter, but um, I think the recipe works with just two sticks of butter, so that's what I'm going to use. But I'll um, post her recipe on the blog and then you can decide for yourself. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we need to cream um, the butters and the sugars always start you know, together. So, um, let me grab the brown sugar, and uh, this brown sugar is organic brown sugar, and it's brown sugar that I made from from scratch. So it's not store bought brown sugar, but if that's all you have, then that's great, no problem. Okay, I'm going to get our blade on here. Now I'm just going to use the blade for, you know, whipping. I only use the whisk for liquid stuff, so. Now this calls for quite a bit of brown sugar. Uh, we're going to do two cups. Okay, we're going to start creaming this, and while it's creaming, I'm going to go grab uh, our next ingredient. You're also going to need a cup of uh, just regular granulated sugar, and I'm using pure cane just because that's her recipe. So, the best desserts start with just the most pure ingredients. So, if you have them, I always try to use them. Get that sugar in there, cream. Okay. Then what we're 
we're going to do is we're going to add a, a teaspoon of um, baking powder and I recommend that you get the uh, aluminum free uh, baking powder because you don't need aluminum and baking powder. I don't know why they add that, but try to stay away from adding metals in your diet. We're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. This is why I held back on the salt for the butter. And this recipe calls for five eggs, um, but she always ensured that I understood that when doing this particular cake recipe, you're gonna wanna add, um, I'm gonna mix this real quick. You're gonna wanna add your eggs one at a time. Now, she lived on a farm, so I know why she did it, her eggs one at a time. One of the main reasons is because um, she used to put her eggs into a different container and then pour each egg in at a time to ensure that the egg was the healthiest egg she could get for the recipe. And you always should check your eggs. I buy mine from an organic store that's already been pre-candled and checked, but um, you should always, uh, certainly if you have a question whether or not the egg is in good shape, check it for sure. So I'm gonna add our first uh, egg to this. We'll start with the first one and we'll get that mixed. Save your shells for, um, I put them in a bin for compost or for your garden. And get that egg in there really going. track of how many too because I've made this before and I've forgotten so because <laughs> five is a lot for a cake you know so this is two she entered this recipe in a contest one time or a church cake drive. I can't remember which one, but um, from my understanding is she won that contest. So I've always kept this recipe just because I think it's one of her winners, right? And I wanted to keep that in the family. more. Try not to make this video very long, but it'll speed up once we get the cake in the oven. Oops. I don't put it on high. I'm just going to really just get the egg mixed in there really well. She also mixed her dry ingredients in a separate bowl, which honestly I rarely do. There's no science behind that, so I'm probably not going to do that, but I'll make sure and post the exact recipe that she had so that everybody, if they want to, can follow it. So that's five eggs, two cups of brown sugar, a cup of uh, regular sugar or pure cane sugar, a teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt. That's what we have in here so far. Okay, so then we're going to add our flour and um, I'm using just an AP flour. You could, um, this recipe doesn't really call for uh, cake flour, so I've not used it. 
uh, for this recipe, so I, I certainly can't recommend it. And this is organic, uh, just white flour. And it's gonna be three, three cups of flour. So these are half cups, so I'm gonna measure. So that's one. I'm just gonna do one at a time. making a mess. I'll have to make that up in the recipe. But you don't want this to flush out on you and I don't have one of the splatter guards so I'm just gonna pulse it until... Vanilla, so one second. I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla in there. about a, a teaspoon of uh, cinnamon. And then let's, before I start it, I'm going to add the other cup of flour. Pulse it a add the last cup of flour I'm gonna add a cup of whole milk and this is just organic whole milk and the reason I'm gonna add that now if I add the flour to this it's gonna really be super thick and the milk sloshes everywhere so I'm gonna try to avoid a little bit of that by um, adding a, a little bit of milk a little bit of flour a little bit of milk and a little bit of flour till we have it all incorporated Her milk wasn't pasteurized. She used, uh, they drank raw milk, but um, this is just organic whole milk. It's been pasteurized, so I think it'll work just fine. I'm gonna wanna use a little bit of milk. These are half cups, so I just have one half left. So let's get that blended. It really helps it. It keeps it from splattering on you. Just to have a liquid in there that's going to absorb that. It's worked for me in the past, so I always use it. Okay, let's add our last. And then our 
the rest of our milk. I'm just going to pulse. We're going to really let that blend for a few minutes. Try to clean off our blades. I don't have any kids at home anymore, but I used to give my blades to my kids. Who doesn't remember that? Getting the blades, running off, trying to find a place where no one would bother you while you enjoyed your the licking of the blades. actually have my grandmother she used and um, she you know she, it's pretty emotional she's been dead um, for many many years but um, she made it an a really big impact in my life and <clears throat> every time I make one of her recipes uh, her original recipes I miss her so uh, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is pour the batter in the pan Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and add some butterscotch chips. Now you can add toffee chips. That works good too. And I'm going to add a cup, or I think it's two cups that she said. Let me see. Oh, a cup of um, chopped cons. And these aren't necessarily chopped but they're whole but I think whole is good too so I'm gonna add about a cup of uh, I'm gonna add about a cup of pecans to this. this this cake is so luscious and so wonderful and rich you can freeze this and thaw it and serve it right from you know it thawing it's so wonderful And uh, I'm gonna get this mixed in here. You do this by hand so you, does it, you don't really beat up your um, your mixer too bad. But these are I'm using a butterscotch, but you could use toffee. This could become a a brown sugar toffee cake too. But And this will really make your home smell awesome. <laughs> so, I'm gonna try to turn it as I go. My kitchen is relatively small and there's not a lot of room to work in it. But when I get my log cabin, home built. I'm going to have a bigger kitchen and lots of light in there. So when I video, it'll be a real sight to see. Can't wait. Father, I'm a daddy's girl and my dad's, his dream was to build a log cabin and live in Colorado. And uh, he bought some property in Colorado. It's been offered to me to purchase through the family. Um, we're not going to purchase it. It's in a an area where there's like, I think there's 700 people or so, but I wouldn't be able to run any of my businesses and it's too rural for what we need. Um, but if I could afford to live out there on a, any sort of steady income, I, I know that I would. I just, I have to have, like most people, you have to have an income in order to sustain yourself. So I won't be able to do that, but Maybe it'll stay in the family long enough and I might be able okay. to. Okay, while our cake is cooling down, we're going to make the caramel sauce for the cake. So let's grab two tablespoons of butter. Let's 
just gonna eyeball it. And uh, we're gonna have uh, 14 ounces of condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk. And you can make sweetened condensed milk yourself. Um, there's lots of videos on how to make it. It's really easy and I normally I do make my own, but we're gonna make this glaze up really quickly and um, I have a spare in my pantry, so. Um, we're going to pour in 14 ounces of sweet and condensed milk along with the butter. Get all that goodness out. We're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. You could do a half if you wanted. I like it really vanilla. Lots of vanilla flavor, so. Let's see. All right. And we're going to need a cup of uh, our brown sugar. And mine's made with uh, Grandma's Organic m Molasses, so it's just it's just really good. You just should really um, consider trying to make your own brown sugar because it is so easy and you'll just be happier with the results and every time you bake something um, or use brown sugar it just does a fabulous job. Now we're just going to take a whisk and we're just going to whisk this and this is going to take about eight minutes um, to make our caramel sauce. This is a great sauce for ice cream. Um, I've done this for ice cream and it turns out really good. So if you like caramel, homemade caramel sauce, or you have ice cream Sunday nights or something like that, this is a really great uh, caramel sauce for that. We've got butter, brown sugar, vanilla, and our sweetened condensed milk. And uh, you're gonna want your cake to cool all the way down before you're drizzling this on there. Um, and this is just a small medium saucepan. We're gonna bring it to a boil over medium high heat and we're gonna whisk it, you know, pretty frequently because we don't want it to stick. Uh, and then we're gonna reduce it to simmer for eight minutes. So once it comes up to a boil, um, we're gonna let it simmer for eight minutes whisking it the whole time. You can't walk off and leave it. And um, then we're gonna let it cool for about five minutes and then we're gonna drizzle it while it's still hot onto the cake. This is a, a sauce so you're never gonna wanna walk away from it being on the stove. Good on about medium high. There's so many wonderful southern cakes and southern desserts that are passed down from generation to generation. I remember another cake my grandmother made, a Coca-Cola cake. Um, and I don't buy soda at all. We don't have soda in our diet at all. But um, Coca-Cola is considered to be a real sugary, syrup-like beverage, so it really works in cakes because it has all that sugar. Um, but I haven't found an alternative to that, so I've not made her Coca-Cola cake in just so many years because I've just not had any soda. And there's so much chemical in soda nowadays. The recipe they originally had for sodas has changed dramatically over time to get cheaper ingredients to make more and more volumes and they really don't care what you're putting in your body. They, they don't really care. All they're worried about is their profit. 
Okay, we're going to get this to a boil and we'll be right back. Once it um, boils, I'm going to cut it way down and we'll let it um, simmer for eight minutes. Um, tell you what, I'll come back at the very end where we're letting it cool. Um, but you're just going to want, you know, when, once you start seeing bubbles on here, then you're going to cut it down to a, a low. And you're going to let it cook for eight minutes. So we'll be back. Okay, I just want to show you, you see the bubbles that are happening around the edges? That's technically, it's boiling. So I've turned the stove all the way down to low, and we're going to cook this for eight minutes. I've set my timer, and I'm just going to stand here and stir it, and uh, we'll be back. Okay, we've got our beautiful bundt cake. Uh, my hands are clean. Uh, that's come out of the oven, and it's cooled down completely. I've got our caramel sauce um, and you could even make this a maple sauce by just adding a little bit of maple syrup uh, to flavor it really well but our sauce is really thickened up quite a bit and we're going to drizzle while it's still warm and it's you know touchable we're going to drizzle it over the cake and this will complete our butterscotch our southern butters butterscotch and uh, pecan bunt. And I'm just going to drizzle. You're going to have a lot of sauce left over. And I don't have this on a really good, you know, what I would consider a great cake plate. But uh, I can easily move it. And your caramel is going to get a little crackly. I wouldn't say candy hard, but it's going to get a little crackly as it sets. Remember that this cake has five eggs and a lot of butter, so you're going to need to keep it in the refrigerator uh, in order to make sure that it's, you know, uh, kept really well uh, and lasts a decent amount of time. I always put half of this cake in my freezer, so if I need a quick dessert or something like that, uh, or we're craving something sweet, we can thaw out a piece of cake and have it. Um, so as you can see, I have a lot of caramel sauce left over, and this is, again, great for um, ice cream or to drizzle over bananas, pancakes, anything like that, and um, you can just pop it in the microwave. If you have a microwave, or put it on the stove, with a uh, line your saucepan with a little bit of butter, and it'll reheat perfectly. So... Um, I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and I hope you'll obviously, I hope you'll try this recipe. Um, I love my grandmother's uh, cakes, her bent cakes, and I love using her pots and pans and baking utensils. Um, I'm going to cut a slice here, put it on a plate uh, to let you see. And uh, this is going to be the fruit, uh, you know, a fruit cake consistency. It's going to be relatively dense, but it's moist. So just so you know, when you cut into it, it's not a light and fluffy cake. It's going to be more of a, you know, a coffee, uh, fruit, fruit cake type consistency. So let me see if I can get on the plate without messing it up too badly. And you could drizzle some caramel sauce right on top of that as well. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm going to take a little bit of organic whipped topping, and it's just 100% um, right on the top. You could sprinkle this with a little cinnamon and have a beautiful dessert. Again, I hope you enjoy this recipe, and I hope you'll join us next time. And uh, wishing everybody a blessed and wonderful week. Take care.